think I know everybody here in the audience. <laughs> so to, my, to all of the friends that have gathered, I'd say we have a treasured opportunity tonight to be together and hear this concert. So let's give us all a hand for coming tonight. Um, fire, fire, rain, locusts, frogs, rabbit, raccoons, who knows what's next. But um, one thing that I'm certain about is I can't imagine a better community that I'd want to weather all of these storms with than you. So. Um, we are here tonight to welcome exceptional musicians to the stage, which is something we do frequently at Wake Forest. But um, the real welcome I want to usher into the space today is to um, bring that attention to Laura Mullen. So, um, Laura, right, you are. Um, on behalf of an entire Grateful University, we're so glad you're here. And um, I am incredibly grateful uh, my name is Christina Soriano, by the way. I, I, I think you knew that, but I'll say it again. And um, I'm the fortunate person to oversee the Interdisciplinary Arts Center at Wake Forest, which is a center that seeks to forge interdisciplinary relationships between the arts and dot, dot, dot. And so when there are opportunities for my humanist colleagues and artists, in this case musicians, to work together, my heart beats loudly. Um, and so, um, Laura, thank you for bringing this opportunity to Wake. The Interdisciplinary Arts Center is so grateful to you for um, this partnership. Um, I know also, too, another person who's really grateful about your presence, and I'm delighted to introduce the Dean of our college, Dr. Michelle Gillespie, to also say a few words. So thank you, enjoy this evening, and thank you, Laura. extraordinary community that is here present tonight and I myself am so so excited after uh, a week of uh, extraordinary <laughs> challenges to be here with you to be able to celebrate these extraordinary extraordinary musicians I also want to thank Christina I think we all know how exceptional <laughs> this is be. Christina Soriano is at Wake Forest and across this entire city and well beyond. Christina, your dedication to the arts is just extraordinary. You always and rightfully so insist and show us over and over again that the arts connects us all. It connects us in the best of times and it connects us in the very darkest moments too. And indeed it pulls us through everything. It pulls us through pandemics and it pulls us through fires as well. Well, it's my desire tonight, it's my sincere belief that we're all here together with these incredible, incredible musicians to celebrate the critical role of the arts in learning and interdisciplinarity. Now, of course, disciplines are important. They make it possible to delve deeply into one subject. And while the disciplinary model of learning and knowledge production is worldwide and certainly very important, disciplines also have their challenges too. They can be arbitrary, they can be reductive. In the 21st century, while disciplines still remain dominant, academe's turn to interdisciplinarity has brought us new approaches to scholarship, to teaching, to pedagogy. Interdisciplinarity, collaborative, critical interdisciplinarity can disrupt the organization of knowledge. It can foster a more democratic and a more egalitarian society, and it can bring whole new approaches to problem solving with its non-linearity and its heterogeneity. Collaborative interdisciplinarity, radical collaboration, as our president at Wake Forest likes to talk about, exposes implicit structures by standing outside of accepted frameworks that it define acceptable discourse and lines of inquiry. Wake Forest has embraced interdisciplinarity with a passion, and I'm so excited about that. Everywhere we look at Wake Forest, we can see all kinds of programs, all kinds of faculty, all kinds of students doing extraordinary things in interdisciplinary ways. And 
I could go on and on and highlight these programs, whether it's our environment and sustainability program, or our biochemistry and molecular biology program, or our new African American studies program, or most especially, especially for tonight, the wonderful Interdisciplinary Arts Center. But it's happening all over the place at Wake Forest, and it's changing the way we teach, the way we write, the way we engage in the world, the way we think. Therefore, it makes me especially pleased to be able to introduce Laura Mulland, who really is not a stranger to any of you here, but let me just tell you about how wonderful she is anyway. She is the William Keenan Jr. Chair of Humanities. She's dedicated her illustrious career to being a powerhouse champion for, and indeed a maker of critical and collaborative interdisciplinarity. Professor Mullen, with the support of the Interdisciplinary Arts Center and the Department of English, and through her special topics in creative writing collaborative class, has used her brilliance, her brio, and her vision to bring this magical night ahead of us to right into, uh, right into parental. She's gonna show us again and again why interdisciplinary matters so much. And you think about what she's done and put together tonight, she's only been here seven short months. Lauren Mullen is a renowned poet. She holds an F MFA from uh, the Writer's Workshop at the University of Iowa. She's nationally recognized as a poet and writer of all kinds of hybrid creative works of poetry and prose. She has many collections of poetry. She's been awarded many prestigious fellowships from the National Endowment for the Arts to the Rona Jaffe Foundation and the Dow Colony. She's the recipient of the Ireland Stanford Prize. Laura's given countless readings all over the country. She's been included in many, many prestigious anthologies. Her work is significant for the way she explores creativity beyond the traditional genre boundaries of poetry. She's put poetry on the page by working collaboratively across the arts. Um, she's done this in collaboration with photographer John David O'Brien. She's done this with uh, a sound uttered, a libretto for a substantial choral operatic piece that was composed by Nathan Davis and was premiered and is still being and being re-performed. Uh, re she's worked in the areas of performance and video art too. You name it, Laura's done it. As tonight event, tonight's event underscores, Laura is a model teacher scholar. She believes deeply in student faculty engagement. She's an exemplary citizen of the university and the English department too. Everything she does, she does is amazing. So without further ado, to tell you what's in store for us tonight, Laura. The air doesn't recognize border. 
Elise is a musician, interdisciplinary artist, and educator. She co-founded, as an undergraduate, the International Contemporary Ensemble, and she was named a MacArthur Fellow in 2012. In 2017, she was awarded the Avery Fisher Prize from Lincoln Center for the Performing Arts. Chase is currently professor of the practice of music at Harvard University's Department of Music, a creative associate at the Juilliard School, and a collaborative partner with the San Francisco Symphony. Passionately dedicated to the creation of new ecosystems for the music of our time, Chase has given the world premieres of hundreds of new works by a new generation of artists. Amazing to think of the legacy of this artist that will be left behind. Her density project, which is headed towards its 10th year, means that she has commissioned new work for the flute every single one of those years and will go on commissioning new work for the flute until 2036. Born in Bucharest, Filipino American Levy Marcel Inglis Lorenzo Jr. works at the intersection of music, art, and technology, and his body of work spans custom electronics design, sound engineering, instrumental building, installation art, free improvisation, and classical percussion. Dr. Lorenzo holds a position as assistant professor of creative technologies at the New School College of the Performing Arts, and his work has been featured at MoMA, PS1, MIT Media Lab, Pitchfork.com, the BBC, and the Burning Man Festival. He is a core member of the International Contemporary Ensemble, where he is a sound designer, electronics performer, and percussionist. Levy Lorenzo's piece, Joysticks, which is happening tonight, is site-specific for us, so listen closely. Let me congratulate you all on being here tonight, and please join me in welcoming these musicians.
to be here. We love meeting the students this morning. Despite the classes being canceled, um, it's, it's, a, it's just a real joy to be here with all of you. Um, that was a piece by Suzanne Bell called The Stimulus of Loss. And that piece, like all of the works that we've selected for tonight's program, is collaboratively, collectively made. In the, each of these works that we chose tonight, in the spirit of Laura's collaboration class, the traditional roles of composer, performer, sound engineer, in some cases, and librettist, lyricist, are all blurred. And these pieces were lovingly, chaotically, messily, and, and collectively brought into being. In the case of The Stimulus of Loss, the piece began with a question that the composer asked me, what are you reading? And I said, I'm reading this ravishing collection of letter poems from Emily Dickinson to Susan Dickinson. And it turned out that Suzanne had been reading the same collection. And so the piece really spun out from there and picked one of these letters that began like this, Dear Sue, to miss you, Sue, is power. The stimulus of loss makes most possession the indemnity for loneliness that such a bliss has been. And, uh, and the piece just flowed from there. So this next work that we're going to play for you is actually two excerpts, the outer movements of an hour-long piece. Um, and so you'll hear basically the overture of an opera and the postlude, and you'll just get to imagine the hour of music that takes place in between. It's by the Brazilian composer Marcos Walter. Levy and I, in collaboration with Marcos, and the director and designer Doug Fitch, created this piece called Pan. It's based on the mythological <coughs> figure of playing fame, um, the great, or not so great, good god, uh, Pan. And these two excerpts that we're going to play for you, the opening scene is called The Death of Pan. And in this scene, Pan is facing his execution. He has just lost a musical duel with the god Apollo. He's screaming for his life, and he's screaming the words, Rubians, blood. No me netangere, don't touch me. I will not atone, I will not atone, I will not atone. And these words are spoken, sung, whispered, scattered by me uh, in lingua ignota, the unknown language invented by Hogarth Bingen in the 12th century. So that's the opening scene. Another hour of music happens, and we'll play the post lead for you, which is a soliloquy that Pan um, attempts to atone in this soliloquy. Uh, after realizing all of the wrongs that he has done, he wordlessly, so without any lyrics, but with his, his language of music that, that comes from his art, he attempts to apologize to the people that he was wrong. So, Death of Pan and Soliloquy from Marcus Walter's Pan. You don't know what I'm hearing.
also in honor of Laura and her wonderful class, which I was wish that I had taken when I was an undergraduate. Um, all these pieces deal with language in some way. And uh, this next piece deals with language not in the form of text, but language in the form of a computer program and of the ex expressive potential of electronic instruments um, and, and computer interactive music. And it's by a wonderful New York based composer named Wang Lu. Um, this is our second performance of it, is that right? Maybe we only, we did it at the premiere. Um, so it's, it's hot off the press. And yeah, we recorded it, but in, in terms of a live audience, this is only our second time out. Um, it's called After Touch, and it refers to the, the, the music that is made after the stroke of a key. Um, in this case, the key of a, a MIDI keyboard, or the key in Levy's case, the, the key of the, of the uh, keyboard. What do you call it? The thing on a laptop, the keyboard. Um, and that split second, that little moment there, um, where another kind of music is made. So it's a raucous, wonderful piece. It was um, a messy birth. For those of you who are interested in learning about these pieces, we are happy to show scores and, and other notational materials. Um, but this one was definitely one of those collaborations that at the 11th hour we were both like, this is not going to happen. I think we might throw in the towel. And it, of course, has already turned into one of our favorite pieces to play. It's a high wire act. Levy's doing um, live electronic processing on almost all of my sounds, and uh, we also have some really sick beats. So this is Wang Lu's After Touch. Thank you. 
Mother, mother, sing, mother, sing, mother, sing, sing for us. Wink. Gaelic, 
God again, 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 is sometimes called black gold. We know, we know, we know, we know, why not, why not, we know, we know, why not, 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 we know gold is known to be the softest of metals. Black is the softness rung laid out of black rock, which has rock gold soft. Through ages and ages of hardness, through ages and ages of suffering, sap remains. It will turn yellow by certain ways and means, of which there are two kinds of yellow. The one yellow, yellow, which turns to gold and is suffered onto black, and by suffering, the oil is squeezed out as black and burning fuel oil. The other yellow. Seeking to live by certain ways and means is exploded, made dust into the air. How exciting that sounds. Cool. Let's start and go back, step by step, by step, by step, by step, by step, by step. Step by step, by step, by step, by step, by step, by step, find out how it's done, and go. Every man say to himself, in his heart, and I step on you. I step on you. The air stops you.
Thank you. 